My name is Kate Epler. I work at the Bridge at Maine at San Francisco Public Library, and I am so excited and grateful uh, to Michelle, who is here with us and will be our instructor today. Thank you, Michelle. My pleasure. Um, so my name is Michelle, and I am a graphic artist at San Francisco Public Library. This presentation is optimized for using Canva on the web. So using Canva from a computer or using Canva from a laptop. Um, Canva also is an app and many of the features that Michelle is going to talk about today are also available from the app, but that may look a little different. So if you are planning to use it from the app, don't worry. The functionality is still largely going to be there. It's just that some of the views may be different from what you see today. Um, so now I have something kind of exciting to do. We wanted to start off by launching a quick poll and ask you all a little bit about how you plan to use Canva, what, what you would like to do with Canva, um, have, if you've used Canva before, and what, um, whether you're thinking about using Canva for print or digital. And this will help us get a little bit of a better sense for who's here. Okay, and here are the poll results. So a good number of you have already used Canva. That's exciting. Ooh, even split between print and digital. Oh no, Michelle. Okay, and most of our users are on a laptop or desktop. If you're on a tablet, it may be a little different, uh, but don't worry, your functionality is still gonna be there. Once again, my name is Michelle. I'm a graphic artist at the San Francisco Public Library. And it's my pleasure to host this overview of Canva today. Um, just so you know, uh, Canva, it, for those of you who are completely new to it, but have some interest, is a cloud-based. That means it's based on a web. You just have to use a web browser to access it. It's a web-based, um, cloud-based software platform for creating your own graphic designs, posters, like web designs, you name it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I first wanna just look at our home screen. So this is where you're going to land when you first log in. Um, and I do have a word of advice for those of you who have never logged into Canva. Um, what it requires is just a simple email and password. Um, there is the option to uh, log in via Facebook or through your Google account. I would actually recommend doing like just a complete fresh login just with a brand new email and password just because there's a slight difference in functionality, um, believe it or not. As, compo as compared to logging in with those platforms. So um, we're logged in. I just wanna give a quick overview of the home screen. So at the top here is our navigation bar. Um, this is affixed at all times for those of you familiar with navigation bars. So when you hop from screen to screen, this is always gonna be at the top, easy for you to access. Um, and the basic um, offerings in your navigation screen are a variety of different templates. So these are pre-made screens that Canva provides for free for you to just add your information to and the graphics, photos, um, animations are already included. This is an easy drag and drop feature and it's one of the best things about Canva for those of you who are new to design and maybe are a little intimidated to just start with a blank canvas. Some of the other features that Canva also offers for free um, are like an incredible cache of photos. The stock photos alone makes um, logging into Canva worth it. There's also a bunch of free graphics like social media icons, animations, you name it. These other tabs include print products that they'd like to sell you. So let's say you create something and you want like an actual print copy of it, they have that available. And then the app section is your um, option to connect to other apps. Like let's say you're a Bitmoji user or a YouTube user, or you're, um, you use Facebook or Instagram, you can actually post directly from Canva to some of those platforms. Um, and Explore, it provides some other extraneous stuff that we won't cover today, but um, when you have a chance, you can look at that. In addition, I would, greatly advise you to explore the learning tab. 
um, you know, I'm only here with you for 90 minutes today, but Canva itself offers a bunch of how-to videos, tutorials, live classes, blogs that you can read that offer you way more instruction than I can um, give you here today. And I myself have used these quite a bit and they've been tremendous. Um, they update you on the latest trends. They can teach you about designing for accessibility. Um, you name it. I, I highly, highly recommend exploring their courses. Um, and then of course, here's the pricing tab. So today we're gonna be covering the free version of Canva, but there is a Canva Pro for a certain monthly fee. I think it's kind of like Net Netflix. It's like 12 or $13 a month. And you don't necessarily have to go for this, but if you find that you become like a really avid user, there are some advantages. And if there's time at the end, we can cover that. Okay, so now that we've looked at our navigation bar, I want to give you an overview of the home screen left-hand side panel. Um, the, the areas that we're going to focus on today are all your designs, all your folders, and create a design. Um, I can quickly go over what shared with you and all these others are. Um, this is just a, a, a component that helps you show when another user is shared a design with you. Brand kit, we won't cover today, but this is your opportunity to build your brand. This is where you can import your own fonts and, and create a brand. Content planner refers to when you wanna post content onto social media channels. It creates a calendar for you where you can like in advance, you know, schedule um, posts to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you name it. Also very useful, but we're probably not gonna cover that today. Um, and create a team is if you end up probably going pro and adding more users to your account and, and creating a business. So once again, we're going to cover all your folders, all your designs, and create a design. Um, I just want to go to all your designs first. So this area um, is it's where all your designs are going to end up. It's kind of a catch-all repository. So as I said earlier, this is a cloud-based software. So you're not constantly having to save to your hard drive. It's saving it for you on the cloud inside of Canva. Um, and this is where everything goes by default unless you create and label folders. So that brings me to all your folders. I highly, highly recommend you utilize this feature. So let me go ahead and reload. So this, this all your folders tab is a place where you can create and organize your folders. And I am a big advocate for good like organizational best practices and like file hygiene because as i said this tab over here all your designs it's just gonna fill up and the months are gonna go by and you're just gonna have a ton of different designs that are unlabeled unorganized and that great flyer that you produced six months ago is going to be buried and you're going to have to scroll through pages and pages to find it not so if you go to all your folders and click on create new folder and name it. So let's name this one, um, we'll call this flyers. And there you go, it takes you to that folder flyers. Um, let's go back to all your folders and now you'll see it here. Right now there's nothing in there, but we'll have a chance to um, add stuff to it later. As you can see, I already created a folder called photos and I added a couple of um, photos of ceramic stuff um, here that we can get to later. All right, going back to all your folders, you'll see those there. So once again, just please, please, I, I would love for you to get used to creating your own new folders, naming them, because you're gonna see once we start designing, this is gonna be really crucial um, to be able to like find and access all the designs that you've created. Um, so next we're gonna go to, actually there's one more feature I'd actually like to emphasize, which is uploads. So uploads, you could see the photos that I added to the photo folder. Those were some photos that um, I uploaded from my computer. Although Canva provides a lot of stock photography, you might have personal photos that you wanna edit and add for that personal touch. This gives you an opportunity. So we'll go ahead and click on uploads and you click on upload in the right hand corner. And it's gonna give me um, 
I'm not sure if you can see it because you only have a view of my Firefox, but basically it's going to take me to a screen that shows me um, my desktop and where I can access my photos. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to add them. And you should see some photos appearing now in the upload section. One of a Russian bookstore, a classroom, and a dog walker. So that gives you a general sense of how to upload photos. And we could go back in our folder hierarchy back to folders. And now you see it there. So next, now that we've kind of gotten all our home screen features out of the way, I just kind of want to jump right directly into creating a design. So up in here in your top right hand corner, you're going to see this purple button, create a design, and you'll click on it. And it gives you a bunch of different suggested um, possibilities. Some of the most common and more popular designs include posters, Instagram posts. It's kind of presented in like a random order, but you can actually type in Instagram, for instance, and it's going to give you pretty much every single Instagram possibility that you can think of and some that you didn't even realize were available. Um, some that are really like granular and specific. So we can start with a Instagram post. Since that is a popular one, I know we were pretty evenly split between digital and print. Um, so we'll just go ahead and start with digital. So now that we're on the design screen, before we start designing, I just want to again, give it like a little overview of what the features are on our design screen. So this is our canvas um, that we're gonna design on. Here is a little sidebar that you can collapse to create more room, um, but you can also bring it back by clicking on one of these left-hand sides um, features. So what you're gonna see is templates, Elements. Um, and Elements is actually, they've recently um, updated Elements to include a lot of, there's, to be honest, there's a lot of redundancy built into Canva. So you're going to have photos, graphics, videos, and audio all in one handy place. In the past, you would actually have to go to more here with these three dots and then click on photos and then add it as its own separate tab. And if you prefer that, if you like having it handy on the side as its own separate entity, you absolutely can keep it like that, or you can remove it and just access it in this like catch all elements tab. It's kind of up to you. Um, so yeah, we have templates, which is the, as I mentioned earlier, all the like different pre-made, pre-loaded, with graphics, with photos, with text, with animation, like different styles of, of templates that you can go in, drag and drop, and just change the text, and you're pretty much ready to go. Um, and the thing about the search bar is you can look for anything you want. Like, let's say you're trying to design like a community flyer. It's going to give you a bunch of different templates related to that theme. Or maybe you want to do something to promote your school. Same thing. It's going to give you a bunch of different templates to promote that exact theme. Um, and you can do the same thing with photos. Once again, there's a terrific photo gallery. Type in anything. Uh, let's say back to school. It's going to come up with a variety of different. And if you don't want all, and let's say you specifically want photos, hit the photo button. If you're just looking for graphics, hit graphics. There's also the option of video and even audio. I don't know if we'll have a chance to cover audio today, but this is also a supreme goodie because it can provide you with um, free music. And another feature that I want to emphasize here is this little tab with like these little um, sliders. You definitely want to make use of this. If you click on that, you can actually filter by color. Like let's say you only want blue black to school templates, or you only want 
uh, photos that really emphasize the color blue. You can emphasize that. Let's say you really only want photos that are optimized for a square format, you can do that. Let's say you don't want animation, you want static, and you definitely want free um, <laughs> for this demo, because if you don't, they're gonna really push you um, for all their pro stuff, which you have to pay for. So let's go ahead and apply those filters and see what we got here. Let's just try school. All right, not much there. Um, let's take away one of these filters. Let's just do square and static and free. All right, so moving on, I wanted to show you additional um, features. Let's start with photos. So as I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of stock photography. I want to demonstrate to you how easily it is to add to photo um, to the canvas and not really have to worry about resizing. So there's two different ways you can add photos to the canvas. One is to simply just click on the photo and it'll show up like so. And another is to drag and drop. And this technique, if you go slowly, this will actually allow you to fill the screen completely and it automatically resizes for you. It also automatically crops. If you're unhappy with the cropping and you wanna move it around, you simply double click with your mouse and it gives you the option to move it around. Obviously this photo is um, for formatted for a more vertical size. So that's um, how we can um, move it is up and down. And if you're happy with that, you can click done and you're done. Now let's say you're not, um, you want more of a border. You can left click detach image from background and go back to the image as I um, demonstrated earlier. So in addition to photos, we can add text. So text is over here and you have a choice of all kinds of um, animated as well as static texts that are more like headliners, but you also have more traditional text. Um, and you can access that by clicking on the text and then going over to this option at the top and then scrolling through different text options that are all with different names. So we've got Allegria, we've got Alice, Anton, and so on. And that's how you can change your text. And you also can change it um, with bolding, italicizing, centering, aligning it, and so forth, adding bullet points. It's all very easy. All right. So that's kind of a demo of how to place objects onto the canvas. When you are placing objects in the canvas, you have some options as to what you can do with those objects. So as I mentioned earlier, um, you have this little bar up here. You can crop, you can flip, which turns it around. You can position it automatically. Let's say you just wanted it to be automatically centered in the middle, left and right, and top and bottom. It'll center it for you. You can also adjust opacity. So this little checkerboard transparency icon, you can adjust transparency. Now let's say you have multiple objects. Um, so let's do another flower. Now let's say you're trying to move this around and you keep accidentally moving this around and you don't intend to, you can actually lock this with this little lock icon. Now, no matter what, I can't move this. And now I can move this as much as I want. This is a very handy feature if you find yourself repeatedly moving or bumping objects on your screen and you don't intend to. This other icon here actually refers to links. Um, we'll cover this maybe later, um, but this is so that you can add um, like a web link for a quiz, let's say, like on your um, Instagram story. 
And that's it for objects. I also wanna point out what these two buttons are. So one is to duplicate and the other is just to add a blank page. Um, if you're doing a lot of work, let's say you're, you're doing like seven Instagram posts for the next seven weeks and you have a template that you wanted repeated like over and over again, maybe you just changed the foreground picture, um, but the background needs to stay the same. This duplicate page is really handy because let's say you wanna make a bunch of them, but only wanna change one feature each time. It's really great. As you've noticed, I probably, this seems like magic that's having happening off screen, but I end up using a lot of shortcuts. Um, and I, I'm not sure if we've provided uh, it for the audience yet, but I do have a list of um, keyboard shortcuts and that's basically the way that I navigate through Canva. So for instance, if I want to undo, I use command or if you're on a PC, control Z and then it undoes stuff. Um, and if I want to like cut and paste or copy, I'll do something like control or command C to copy and control or command B to paste. Um, so I would definitely highly recommend getting familiar with the keyboard shortcuts to make your life easier because that's gonna be your best way of undoing, copying, pasting, all those common commands. Okay, so now we've got this overview of placing objects onto our canvas, um, how to manipulate and control objects. Um, let's actually make a design. Oh, wait, I actually have one more thing to show you um, as far as the control panel. Once you've created a design, you're gonna wanna share it and save it, of course, to your um, desktop. And like, even though Canva like saves on the cloud, you may want to like save it to your desktop for your own purposes. So I wanna show that to you as well. Um, so if you wanna share it and download it to your computer, you go to the share button, go to download, and it's gonna give you all kinds of options. Um, you can download it as a PNG file, as a JPEG, as a PDF, um, as a GIF. Um, if it has video or animation, um, you can also do it as an MP4. Um, so you're gonna wanna make use of that and figure out what your best specs are. Um, and you do have the option to only download one page as opposed to all three that I, I created in my copies earlier. And you also have the ability, I, I neglected to show this to you, but there's this like kind of ghosted area here that says all changes saved. Um, whenever I do a new move, like let's say I just add this really quick, it's gonna say unsave changes because it hasn't had a chance to save it yet. But if you wait a moment, it's gonna change to all changes saved. So that's what I mentioned earlier that this is cloud-based software. So it's continuously saving to the cloud. And you may ask, well, where is it saving? Um, and it's back on, if I can go back to your home screen here, all your designs. By default, it's saving it here. But as I said earlier, we wanna practice good file hygiene. So what does that mean? If you wanna save it within the cloud on Canva to a specific folder, you're gonna go up here in the upper left-hand corner to file, and you're gonna to go to save to folder. Um, and let's say, well, there's no Instagram folder, not a problem we'll create new folder. I'll go back and show you that again. Right down here, it says plus create new. You can create a new folder as you're working and we can make this for Instagram posts, add to new folder. And there's a little bit of a limitation here. Obviously three folders is like too many for the free version, but we can, um, or actually four is too many. It looks like it was able to hold, save it to this third folder, but that is good to know. All right, so now that we've gotten familiar with kind of the layout of the canvas um, in the design screen, let's actually move on to creating a design using a template. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and 
I'm gonna go back to my home screen here. Let's create a design. And oh, one word of advice, there's two ways you can access templates. As I showed you early on the navigation bar, you can look at templates here. Like let's say we wanna do an Instagram story. And the nice thing about this is that you can see a lot of templates at once in a large screen format, as opposed just to like kind of shrunken down on the left-hand side of the design screen. So if this is better for you visually, um, the ability to just scroll through, this is a great way of looking at templates. And again, you can like do a lot of filtering by theme, by style, by price point, which is very important. And you can actually um, like for let's say a party, it's gonna like narrow it down even more. So that's one way of looking at it, but we can also do it within the design screen itself. So we'll go ahead and look at templates. So maybe we'll do something that's really popular. So this shows you how easy it is to design with a template. All I had to do was click on it and it already provided me with a pre-made template with graphics, color choices, and a place to enter text. And if you want, you can just simply add your photo. And add text. and you already have your pre-made Instagram story ready to go. So that's an example of a digital template. Um, there's also print templates. I know that in our survey earlier, we had some interest in designing for print. So I wanted to demo that as well for you. So let's do a flyer. So we'll go ahead and type that in. And I noticed when um, I typed in flyer, for some reason, these small handbill size are already like included, um, but the default that isn't, doesn't show up until you roll over it with your mouse is eight and a half by 11. So that's like our traditional letter size piece of paper. Um, it doesn't show the size until you actually roll over it. Um, so let's go ahead and try that flyer. And let's do school flyer. Now I know this might be a popular topic for, for some users. So let's scroll through and see which one of these really applies to us. Perhaps we're doing teacher appreciation week or literacy day, or we have like a back to school registration. Let's take a look at that one. Oh, that's pro. So once again, let's utilize our little scroll here. Should actually filter by free. I think sometimes they put these um, pro versions in here, even though we've asked for free only just to entice you. <laughs> um, so you can feel free to ignore that. Um, let's try this one. So in some cases, some templates are actually gonna be multi-page. Um, if you don't wanna have both pages, you can just simply click on one. But if you do want both, it gives you the option to do so at once um, here. And once again, it's very point and click, very simple. They've provided all the graphics for you. You just go ahead and change the text as needed um, for your uses. 
And I wanted to point something out. Maybe you love this uh, template. You like the the word, the text choices, the, the font choices, but maybe you really don't like the color scheme. This isn't true of all graphics um, in Canva, but many provide you with the option to adjust colors. So let's say you hate this red and you prefer orange. It's gonna give you the chance to not only change this one individual graphic, but if you scroll down here to change all, it's gonna change all the reds to this orange that you've selected in here. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't apply to the text. So you actually have to go in separately to the text and go to text color here. And luckily it keeps track of all the colors that your document is current, currently using. So that orange is already up here. It's the same orange that you selected earlier. You can just go ahead and click on that. And let's say for some reason you're like, ah, oh, maybe I don't love this font after all. You can go ahead and scroll through and see something that appeals to you more. So that is a basic overview of using templates. Um, I wanna maybe venture into something a little more dangerous and exciting, which is starting from scratch. Um, perhaps some of you in the audience have been faced with this task of completing something totally original. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. And if that's really intimidating, there are still some tools that Canva provides that can help you with that task. So let's go ahead and go back to our home screen, go to create a design. I'm gonna do a flyer again. Now let's say I run a business. Let's say I have a ceramics uh, shop and I have a bunch of different classes that I offer and they're all different and I wanna tailor each one to each audience for each class. Um, and I don't even know where to start. Maybe I've uploaded a couple of photos from my class and that's about it. That's all I have. How do I get started? Well, I highly recommend taking advantage of component called styles. It's over on the left-hand side under text. And if for some reason it doesn't appear on your screen when you're doing it, always feel free to click on this three dots more and you should be able to find it. Um, so styles has all, which is a combination of header text, um, subtext and color schemes, or it has it divided into just color schemes and just font combinations. I really love this feature when I'm just trying to get started and brainstorming because if I'm at a total loss and don't know where to start, this gives me a little bit of a push. Um, so I'm going to scroll through and let's say I have like, kind of like an offbeat, a little bit different like ceramics class. Um, we'll call this my punk ceramics class. I may click on this color scheme which is this really jarring, um, bright, like kind of acid chartreuse green. So that gives you a vibe to start with. Um, and if for some reason that color is not working for you, you can hit the shuffle button and kind of scroll through the colors. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with this uh, green. And let's say I want, you know, to draw my attention to the title of the class, I might go ahead and just scroll through and pick a font combination that I feel like really kind of resonates with the vibe of this class. Let's scroll through and scroll through and maybe this, this seems a little too formal. Same, maybe something a little more casual. And I'm like, mm, I like the look of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this. Um, and I'm gonna edit the heading
and maybe make it a little smaller. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my photo. Um, I did show you earlier that I had a photos folder in which I uploaded imagery from my desktop. And this was one of the images. So we here at the library are not advocates for smoking, but these are really, really cute ceramic um, anthropomorphized uh, cigarette butts um, that are really adorable. Um, and we're gonna say this fits the theme of my class perfectly. Um, but let's say we're teaching a more traditional class, um, maybe bowl throwing and the look and the feel of it needs to be totally different. I'm gonna use this handy duplicate page that I showed you earlier, but I'm gonna start changing around the images and the color. So I'll get rid of this, add this, maybe edit it just a little. I'll say, Pardon my typos. Change the point size. And we're like, oh, this green does not work. We'll go ahead and change the color to something perhaps a little more sedate. Um, like a nice neutral beige so that the photo is more the star of the show. And this is just to demonstrate that even if you're completely at a loss with a blank page, you have these tools to show you different color themes. Um, and to give you a different vibe. Can you create a style with custom colors? So what if, what if you don't want one of these color schemes? What if you want to assemble your own? So I believe that is a feature in your brand kit and that might be a limitation depending on whether you have the free or the, um, the Canva Pro. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what we got here. There are some options. It looks like you can create a palette. So you can go ahead. Oh, look at that. Um, so this is a very primary colored palette that you might want to use for let's say like preschool or something like that, or a Mondrian <laughs> art exhibit. Um, so that's a palette that you could create with your brand. Um, that's a really great question. I, I appreciate you asking. So we'll call this one Mondrian. Um, Cause it looks like with Canva free, it's like it's only letting me do this one palette and naming this one palette with this one set of colors. Um, Great question, thank you. And then if you, um, there's a couple more, do you wanna take them now or? Yeah, yeah, so if, if they seem like they're a good fit right now, I'd be happy to take them. Just on sort of uh, uh, element manipulation, we, there's some questions yeah. about resizing an element. For instance, a photo, if you don't wanna crop the photo, you just want the photo to be smaller, maybe you could demo that again. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go ahead and create a design. Actually, the way I would probably advise doing it is to go back to your folder where you've uploaded your folder to Canva. So let's look at it at just full size. You're gonna go to this little menu here with the three dots. And actually, no, click on this. Hold on one second. There we go, pardon me. So you just go ahead and click on the photo and then click on use in the design. Oh, 
Okay. And the question was, how do you um, yeah. edit it? Okay. Yeah, like if I, I like that image, I don't want to crop it. I just want it to be smaller. Okay. So one of the ways that you can make the photo smaller is just through simple like dragging. So you can just pick a, one of the four corners and drag it and it will actually show you the width and the height in pixels. Um, and let's say you want to actually drag it from its center. You do the same thing, drag it from a corner, but hold down your option key on your keyboard if you prefer. And that's pretty much it. I would actually advise if you had like a specific size in mind that you wanted, like let's say you wanted it to be the eight and a half by 11 flyer size. Like if you wanted to just print it out on a letter size piece of paper on your printer, which is probably most common for most users. I'd click on it and then resize it until you get it to whatever size you want. In this case, because I chose an 11 and a half by um, a eight and a half by 11 letter size, when I drag on it, it's actually showing me units in inches this time as compared to that previous screen where everything was in mm -hmm. pixels. Mm -hmm. So that's really good to notice. Um, and you can do the same thing for, you know, obviously some really common photo print sizes are eight by 10 or, you know, uh, four by six, same principle. Mm -hmm. There is like a resize button here, but I've been reluctant to show it to you because I don't know if you've been noticing this little iconography, but every time you see this, this royal crown, it means that it's not free. <laughs> um, and so like, if this is a terrific feature of Canva Pro that automatically can resize it. So, but I'm unable to demo it for you here. If you could show again how you got a blank page. Yeah, yeah. And then what if I want a size that's not like one of the standard sizes? Can I Absolutely. adjust the size of my canvas? So let's, let's combine those two questions into one. Um, so if we go to our home screen, um, the easiest way to get a blank canvas is from create a design. And it's going to ask you you know, for all these like preset sizes as the, um, as one of the audience members asked about, I don't wanna do a preset size. You're in luck, custom. Mm. And then you can do it within different units, pixels, inches, millimeters, centimeters, you name it. So let's say I have like a really funky size. It's like 2.5 by seven. Um, Looks like there is a little bit of size limitation because I'm, I'm doing pixels instead of inches. <laughs> <laughs> so let's try that again. So let's do 3.5 by 5.5, let's say. Create a new design. Now it's automatically that size. And Great, the, de the default is width by height, by the way. That's like kind of the convention. So that's why it's, it's more... Um, shaped vertically like this. So I'm gonna keep going and let's go back to photos. So I wanna get into more detail about the possibilities with photos. Um, let's choose this cute little dog here. So I showed you the basics of like positioning, um, adjusting opacity, things of that nature. There's actually way more that you can do with Canva. And if you've noticed, there's this edit image button. And there are some really exciting things that you can do. Unfortunately, I can't do background remover, which is one of my favorite of all time features. That is a premium feature. But just to give you a quick little rundown of what that does, imagine you just want this dog and you don't want any of this background stuff. It automatically like gets rid of all of that. And it's such a cool feature. I have to tell you as a designer, like working in Photoshop and being trained in it, that used to be like a much more difficult thing to do by hand. Now the algorithm can do it for you. I don't want to sell it too hard because it's you have to pay for it. But if you end up getting serious about you know using Canva, it's like one of the cool things that you can do with it. 
So moving on to the free stuff, um, there are all these filters that you can apply. And for those of you who use other apps like Instagram, you're probably quite familiar with this, but I um, would be um, remiss if I didn't mention it. So there's all these different colors and like tints and just kind of, um, you know, tones and feelings that you can kind of elicit by changing the filter. And please at your leisure play with this. Um, and there's a practical use for this too, which is grayscale. Um, for many of you, myself included at home, I just have a black and white printer. And being able to see and preview what it looks like in black and white before I print is really useful. Um, you know, I can't necessarily afford to cut a print in color all the time. So you may wanna just change that flyer before you print it into grayscale. So this is a really useful um, feature. Street is kind of like grayscale, but it's just like a way more high contrast. So there's our filter. Um, so photogenic is kind of like filters. Um, again, for those of you who use stuff like Instagram or you have a smartphone with its built-in filter features, it's very similar. It's just more of, of options um, and more color tints, things of that nature. So feel free to play around with that at your leisure. And then for some of you, this is very on trend. For some of you, this might be too trendy, but there are those of us who want to give a little pizzazz in a kind of monochrome color way. Um, and so you have these options to create these monochrome colors. And once again, you know, for some of you, this might be a little cheesy. Um, but it's still popular and you see it a lot in advertising. So it might be appropriate for your use or your business. And some of these I may not be able to link to. They may not be available for this photo. But those were the main ones. Oh, and one more that is actually quite useful when you're doing presentations um, is kind of a standard feature, even for old PowerPoint presentations and things of that nature, is shadows. Um, let's see if I can scroll down to it. So the classic drop shadow. Um, Pardon me, let me access the shadows again. Give it a moment to load. And you get to preview each one. And this is kind of a standard feature, um, when, especially when you're doing presentations, especially like let's say the background color is very close to the foreground color. Sometimes this is really useful. Like, um, like let's say I have a flyer that has a white background and then the background here is also white. Sometimes it's nice to have a shadow so you can differentiate between the two. And then another feature that I want to show you, let's go ahead and go back to one of our designs. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. Just bear with me one moment. Okay, so let's look at this, this punk ceramics class. Let's add just a little more text. Um, And change it up a little.
So let's say we have this flyer and we also want to not only have a print flyer, but have something for, for digital. Now, based on some market research that I've read up to like 80% of professional um, digital outreach advertising is gonna include some element of motion graphics, video, it's gonna be more eye-catching. It's just human nature. If something's moving, it's gonna capture your attention more. And you're in luck because Canva offers preset animations. And if you go over to this corner here where it says animate, you're gonna have two different options. Um, one is page animation and the other is text animation or photo animation. The difference between a page animation or an individual element animation is this. If you just wanted to highlight one component and animate it, you would just select the object and then experiment with the different animations that are here. So you go ahead and click on that. Some are more subtle than others. Um, tumble is a really like very active one, as is Rise. But let's say you wanted to actually animate the entire page, you would select page animation and it would animate all these features. And once again, compared to just a static image, it's gonna be way more eye-catching. And so when you select the animation on the side here, it's only gonna show it to you once but you should be able to hit this button up here with this play button if you wanna view it repeatedly. And you can also change the timing of it. This one's a little slow. So let's go ahead and try tumble. Let's adjust the timing to three seconds, make that quick, quick, quick. Try that one more time. And you should be able to just preview that over and over again. You can actually get rid of this. Um, try that one more time. And this is a really nice feature just because again, like the, the, the focus on, on motion graphics is getting increasingly higher and higher and um, advertisers and small businesses, this is to your advantage just to get more people looking at your stuff. Here's a question. As a designer, does animation ever become like too much? <laughs> That's a fantastic question. Um, I think it can be really distracting. You have to keep your audience in mind. You have to think about accessibility. Um, if you're designing for an audience who maybe has um, some kind of uh, eyesight limitation, um, maybe it's too much. Um, you also have to keep in mind that some animation, if it's too flickering and bright, can actually be a health risk for people who suffer from seizure disorders. So that's something that to keep in mind. I would say that the animations that are made available within the context of this particular app of Canva um, aren't gonna uh, pose that problem. <laughs> um, and some of them are quite subtle. Um, and as, as to whether it's too much, that's why I would recommend playing around with just using um, the single um, element animation if the page animation is too much. So you can always like just focus on just one element um, for the photo. Mm -hmm. And then get rid of, choose none for the page. And maybe the photo is the thing that is the star and like gets everything. So let's preview that. So the text is really static, mm -hmm. but the photo has is kind of action packed. So that's a really great question. It's really up to you as a designer to decide whether or not your audience needs all that movement. And then if your image has an animation on it, can it be displayed or played on any platform? So where will your animation work? 
So that's a really great question. So um, for instance, that's, that's a good segue to sharing this. So since this contains animation, we'll go over to share, um, download. So you can see the default is MP4 video. And the reason why this is suggested is because platforms like Twitter, like Instagram, Facebook, this is kind of the format of choice for video. And those three aforementioned will allow you to post video. Um, yeah. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, some questions about photos and rights permissions. There is a caveat um, in Canva for their free photos um, about copyright. Like you basically, in a sense, you're, even though there's no fee associated with the free version of Canva, um, Canva is paying those photo contributors a certain type of license, but it's limited. So you can't claim that photo as your own. Um, and you, there, are, there might be some stipulations about how you profit off of its use. Right. This is a good time to say we are not attorneys. <laughs> that is a great, great <laughs> point, Kate. Um, I'm pretty sure that it is posted somewhere on Canva's site about um, fair use. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure um, that I ran across it. A question about using Canva for making video, which is a little bit outside our scope today, but it is right, a little, little share bit. Sure. Um, I. To be honest, Canva, this is a feature Canva is still kind of beta testing and working through, but they do offer video. It's not gonna have the versatility and features of like, you know, professional video software like Premiere or something of that um, nature. But let's take a look what they have to offer. Again, this is uh, the beta. They're still working on this. There's, it's still kind of rudimentary um but i can give you a little so let's just just for sake of ease we'll just like pick one of their templates and see what we can do with it um okay so you can see it's like a very basic animation And it has like a basic timeline that you can scroll over and you can sort of truncate that timeline. So those of you who are familiar with video editing software, you're probably familiar with those features. Now you can see it's very fast, mm -hmm. um, but, or we can stretch this out. And it takes, and it kind of takes a little bit longer. So those are like the basic features. Um, as far as uploading your own video, I'm not familiar with that feature yet. All I know is like using what they already give you in terms of presets. Um, and of course you're gonna be wanting to add audio to that. I wasn't gonna cover that today, but I do wanna just show you really quickly that audio is available as a resource, um, either vocal or instrumental. You're gonna scroll over these. Most of these are available for free. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to demo um, sound. Uh, it may if you look down here. Yeah. Just trust. If I could demo the sound, the so the audio would appear down here and you could add it to your video. Thank you. And then could you go over again? We talked okay. about, um, you know, it's save, it's saving as you work. Yes. And then naming files, downloading files. Yes. Getting it to the point where you might email it to somebody. Great question. Um, so let's look at one of our previous designs. Let's just open this, this design. So you can save under the file menu to the cloud. 
So you have folders that you've already created. And just to review, um, those folders are on your home screen under all your folders. These are some folders that I made. And I think there was like a limitation of three new folders in the free version. So I have this flyers folder, I have a folders folder. Um, so going back one moment. So you can, Pardon me one second. So you can go ahead and do file, save to folder and find that folder and save it there. And again, that's cloud-based. If you wanna download it, you can go to the share button over on the right-hand side in the upper corner, go to download and then save it in whatever designated a file type that works for you, whether JPEG, ping, PDF, and so forth. You've got the option also of sharing it with people. Um, if you have it hooked up to your Google Drive, um, you can do it that way. You can also create a link to share it over email. Um, copy the link. And I should be able to like paste that link and send it to anybody. Um, so let's see if I can. So I went ahead and copy and pasted that link. And there it is. There's my design. So you could email anybody that same um, URL link and they should be able to open it. And again, I don't know if you noticed, but there were permissions that you could give, whether it's just view only or edit. So the edit link is gonna look a little different. It's actually gonna give them this design screen, which means they can wreak havoc and do whatever they want. <laughs> um, so be warned. But if you're working in a team um, and somebody else um, has input to give you as to color, design, et cetera, they can do it. One word of advice that I would give would actually be to make a copy. So that way your original version is saved and then they can make their own and they can kind of rename it, you know, open mic night two. Um, and then you'll have more than one version to compare and contrast and talk about. Great question. What else we got, Kate? We have a question um, and I'm going to try to do it justice. Um, yes. It's about placing multiple photos. And this questioner is using the iPhone app version. Okay. But sometimes the grids, it's about grids for placing photos. If the available grid don't match the photo sizes they want to use. Okay. Can you adjust the size of the grids? Does that, does that make sense? So I'm guessing the photo grid is some kind of template that they're using. Um, let me see. So let's say, let's just pick one. Okay. And so you want to add a photo to fill in. So we'll go to our photos here. Okay. So let's just go ahead and add our photos. And the question was, what if you want to change the size of the photo or the size of the grid frame? I think it's the size of the grid. So if we want to change the, the photo, we double click and we can move that around, but you actually want to make it smaller, let's say, and now it's stuck. You're trying to grab this corner. You can go bigger, but you can't go smaller. And that's frustrating, right? So, this is a limitation, I think, of some uh, tablet and phone users It's if, who aren't using a mouse. So, and I think this might be a limitation with Canva on those formats, but if you have a mouse, you can click the, the, on the photo and then right click, because there's a right click button on my mouse and there's something called detach image. Um, and you're gonna be able to like 
now resize it to your heart's content, right? Um, and that's the only way I know of. And if you're using like a, an iPhone or a, or a tablet, you might not be able to change the size. All right, so let's go ahead and delete this. I think what you might be wanting is frames. So that was just above grids or all grids are is just a bunch of different frames. Mm -hmm. And you can adjust the size of your frames to whatever you want and then put your photo in it. And like, you can like, you know, decide. So I'm just like copying and pasting right now. Um, let's go ahead and there we go. So like, let's say this is my grid. It's not letting me do one side, but yeah, I would, I would actually rely on frames to create your own grid and resizing these individual ones. Yeah, so let's go ahead and pick one of our photos. that there oh wait this is the wrong kind of frame it's got like a little cheesy tear effect in it which we don't want <laughs> so pardon me bear with me for a second yeah this is like a little cheesy tear thing we don't want let's try to pick a plain one okay there we go go back to upload or could you change Whatever. the size of the frame? Yes. Oh. Can do that. Can definitely change the size of the frame. So my advice would be just maybe you have to kind of optimize the size of the frame in your grid first, um, which is a little bit of a bummer. You're really limited in downsizing your image within the frame. Let's say you use the same the same tools over and over again. You've got some like favorite tools or like filter or color or an animation. Is there a way to make like a quick access toolbar of your favorites? Yes, I believe. Kind of a stumper. Okay. Let's see. I think you can, let's say you wanted to do, let's see, like what, what would be a feature? Like, let's say you love using are you talking like, about like filters? Yeah, or? like a particular photo filter. Some examples were filter, color, and animation, so. Okay, so I know that you can pin stuff here. Let's try the image. Let's just do the steel tone. Let's try down here. So I know that you can hook up to a lot of these um, app integrations. And if Duotone was available, like let's like you can connect, like let's say with Bitmoji and it would show up here until you decide to get rid of it. I, I don't have a Snapchat account, so I can't do it right now, but it would appear here. Um, but it looks like Duotone, for instance, that that filter is not showing up as an option in this scroll bar. So you can't just click on it and have it added to here. But that's a really great question. That would be a nice feature. Some are, some not. I, I get that. I think it's just based on their like licensing agreement, but you get this premium real estate where you can add your, your um, integration. Right. Yeah. All right. I would highly encourage you to hop on Canva, if you haven't already created an account and start playing around with all the different tools and features, 
Thank you so much, Michelle. It was my pleasure. Wonderful tour. And I really do encourage you guys to play around, try something out, try out a project, see what comes up. But Michelle, do you have anything to add about um, how to add a watermark onto sure. a design? Um, since we still have a couple minutes left, I'll go <laughs> ahead and create a design. So let's say you want to create a watermark for your trademark adorable kitten here. Um, a lot of times that's just going to be some form of text. Um, and I would suggest using just a high contrast. So a lot of times that's just going to be white. And you can take down the size. And you can take down the opacity. Um, and also have it have a little bit of glow, something of that nature. Um, there's the opacity button. So you can maybe take that down a little. And then when you go to download it or share it, it'll be in the corner. So I mean, that's all really a watermark usually is. Um, you may want to actually put it over the photo if you're really concerned about people using your stuff um, and reproducing it like for stock photography in which case you know you would choose maybe a darker color great bye everybody thank you so much for joining